Welcome. This is a walkthrough of the teacher user guide for the AP Computer Science Principles course. To begin with, we'll start off, as you see here, from page one with the digital portfolio at the College Board. And if you do not yet have an account, you will need to sign up. Once you do, you would log in. Once you log in, we're now on page two. And mine looks a little differently than what it says because I already have a class set up in the system. So if you don't see the setup classes at the beginning, what you do is you go up to the top where it says class setup in order to switch pages. Now we're at the managing classes and rosters for this year. You'd scroll down, choose your school, select which course it is because we're not the only ones with the portfolio. So you choose computer science principles. And especially if you have multiple classes, you'd want to put something in here to let yourself know which class it is that you're working with. With the programming languages, in the, our case, we would be using App Inventor. And I can add that. And you also do have the, the ability to add more than one class, or one, more than one language. So now, I should be able to add the class. Oh, no, because I need to add this. So I'll put a letter there for mine, and then I can add my class. It should appear down at the bottom. And while this one is adding, you can see that I already had another class set up. So now, since I do already have one class set up, I can switch over to my home page and start walking through for page four. So in page four, I have my two classes and I'm going to, to um, for the first, first bit, choose the one I just created where it says A, but then I have my overview, my class roster, which at this point in time is currently empty. I can check the progress on my students, which I have no students, so there's no progress. But I can also, I clicked back on class roster. Here's my join code for the class. If I need to switch to a different class, I go up to my classes and switch to my other class. So I am now switching over to page five. On page five, talks about navigating through with the left-hand navigation bar. There is a different area for both the create and the explore. And so for each one, an explanation of what you need to do and being able to get to the individual video, written responses, and program code. Now, Going on to page six, talking about the student enrollment, your students will also need to go to digitalportfoliocollegeboard.org and log in using their student account. They may already have one if they've taken the SAT or other AP classes, and if not, they will need to create an account to be able to do this. Once they've logged in, they can add a class, and that's where your class code comes in. So multiple places to get that code, but one, you can always go back just to grabbing the class roster to find your join code at the top. They'll enroll with a join code, follow the directions one step at a time, and click on enroll. See, I believe we're over to page 10 at this time, working with the classroom management. You can, if you have a team teacher or a co-teacher, you can add a co-teacher to your classes to do this. We're going to go back to class setup. We're going to scroll down and choose the class. I will choose this new A class. 
and add a co-teacher. I currently have many teachers to choose from, and these are all teachers within my school who have been approved for a, as AP teachers. If that teach, they have to already have um, access through the, or have been given access through the school by having an account. Um, so if that area is not working for you, reach out to your AP coordinator for your building or district. I will just, actually, I will just grab one teacher from here. I would click add, and that teacher will show up underneath. I will not do that at this time, because I do not want to surprise my coworker with, hey, you're now teaching AP Computer Science Principles. Student enrollments. To confirm student enrollments, I'm now on page 11. You would click on the class roster. To get to class roster, you need to choose one of your classes. I will choose D block, and I'll go to my class roster. Okay, once you're in the class roster area, you can see any teachers who have been confirmed. Students will come, will put in the code, but then it'll sit here and ask for you to confirm. It'll say confirm or dropped, as in the image on page 11, and you would need to click confirm. If I need at any time to change that, I can click on edit. So let's say the student needed to drop the class. I'd click drop. Student would no longer be enrolled. So I'm going to cancel that. So another piece are uploading some supporting materials. You do have access to upload these materials through, um, through any of the places within Create or Explore. So I'm going to switch to page 12. And in, on page 12, I'm going to follow through as they have it there. Choose my Explore and the Computational Artifact. So with the computational artifact, I could, as I scroll down, go to resources from your teacher and click the add button. I can give them a name. I am limited in the types of files to read the um, directions of what types of files can be uploaded, or I can upload a link. Resources you can provide to students um, include assistance with self-monitoring of their own progress. You may not provide research or articles or evidence um, for students. And you would put it, make sure you put it in the correct place. If it's for explore, put it under explore. If it's for create, put it under create. At the bottom of page 12, we need to look at how to navigate or how to download and view the student work. So you do have the ability to review work. I'm going to start from in here where I am. Um, I can view details for this student, which includes downloading the latest submission. I can also see what activity the student has done when it comes to submissions or if there's been a new version uploaded. Since this student has already done a final submit, all I can do is download the latest. If it is still in draft, you have other options as well. The next piece of our navigation on page 14 is the final submission review. You can review the work from the progress page. So I'm going to scroll up, click my class summary, click my progress, and I can see what the status is. Your key across the top, no draft, draft in, complete. So for this class, I have one student with no draft, and that's for PC, program code. I have multiple students with a draft in. 
the black check marks are when the you find the student is final has sent set it as final. They're not going to be able to upload a new version. So it's a final submission. The orange triangles, they can still add something more. So if I take a look, these are all in create. If I go to my create section and I look at my program code and I scroll down to my students, I can view details. So if I check my first student again, I have my download latest and be able to also up see new, new versions. If I go to the student who has not update loaded anything, it just says file upload and submission. So continuing to page 15, if you want to look at the completed final submission, you can click on the check mark. You get some guidelines and samples. If you look at something and believe that there's evidence that this is plagiarized, you may report that. Um, the viewer print submission button to review this submission is up here in the right hand corner. And if I click that, this student had a video, so it was down it downloaded to my computer. And I could also, if I believe that there's an issue, for example, if they submitted the wrong thing, return the file to the student. And I will show you another one. I'm going to go back and show you this student through the written response, which will pull up the responses in the College Board template. Once again, I can report plagiarism. I can view or print the submission, which will do an automatic download of the PDF. Or I can return the file to the student. Do not return a file to a student because of the quality of the work submitted. They are not to have any feedback onto the qual as to the quality of their work until after the College Board exam. So now on page, there we go. Now, turning over to page 21, it's important to make sure your students state their intent to take the exam. That way, you know that their scores are going to get connected and actually um, scored. So if you look under the class summary for progress, I have one student where my, my roster shows up orange, no selection. This student needs to go back into their account and choose whether or not they are going to take it. The rest of the students have already chosen, in this case, yes. If a student says no, then there would be another indication through here. Page 22 shows students what that looks like. If you were setting this up before mid-April, then you, your students will not yet have an AP number. That will be given to them when they register. So it's not in it, this actually as stated on page 22 the you still have to order the end of course exam as part of the AP exam ordering process so make sure your building or district's AP coordinator does have that and when they set up their exam number they get their exam number they'll be able to enter that information and on page 23, it says that those numbers should be available as of April 1st. So they do need to go back and do that. So that 
takes us through the end of the user's guide for the AP Computer Science Principles exam. Um, and I hope it helped. Good luck.